Welcome to the Afro-Venezuelan broadcast brought to you by Africana Studies. Today my newscast and I will discuss the artistic expressions in Venezuela with African roots. I will now touch upon issues concerning the Teatro Negro de Barlovento, church celebrations, and the Fiesta of San Juan Batista. The Teatro Negro de Barlovento is an Afro-Venezuelan group. It was formed in 1975 by Victor Palacinos. The primary aim of this group is to spread the Afro-Latino traditions of Venezuela. This group helps to preserve and develop the artistic elements of Venezuela's African-descended population. They have performed in Europe, Africa, and throughout Latin America. For 25 years, Teatro Negro de Barlovento has brought to the stage the cultural values of the Miranda State through music, dance, poetry, and performance. Afro-Venezuelan ceremonies have been primarily linked to the Christian calendar. Afro-Venezuelan music, dance, and costume traditions are associated with specific church celebrations. During the Dia, Dia de los Incetes, the Feast of Fools, in Barlovento, women parody male authority with absurd degree, decrees and cross-dressing. The Diablos Danzantes are the centerpiece of the Corpus Christi celebrations. They perform in vivid costumes and masks that incorporate African imagery. Afro-Venezuelan arts have become an essential part of the Barlovento area of Venezuela. In Barlovento, the Fiesta of San Juan Bautista has been important since days of slavery. The three days of San Juan represent the only three days of the year during which slaves were given a rest from hard labor and were permitted to gather freely. Oral traditions and musical theatrical performance are common occurrences during the celebration. Many groups, amateur and professional, do performances in the streets during this time. Afro-Venezuelans celebrate this to connect to their heritage and past African roots. Take it away, Candice. Thank you, Raven. Today I'm in San Francisco de Yare for the day of Corpus Christi, where a ritual dance is performed in honor of the holy sacrament of the altar. The dancers here wear devil masks and are dressed in blood red robes. Originally performed by members of an Afro-Venezuelan brotherhood, this dance is meant to chase away evil and assure the well-being of the people here. The dancing devils are dance around the plaza before morning mass. Afterwards, they begin to dance through the town to the beat of drums and maracas. And now we will go to the streets to see some actual dancing. Three. amazing performance. We are going back to Raven in the newsroom. Thank you, Candace. That was quite interesting. I will now turn things over to Caitlin. Thank you, Raven. Today I will be talking about the African influence of music in Venezuela. Many aspects of Afro-Venezuelan culture can be traced directly to Pacific regions of Africa. Some of the traditions include techniques for playing and making drums and instruments and etc. Drums are a big part of the African influence in Venezuela. Some drums include the burro, kamako, and some others. Alegua, an African Venezuelan women's group, is well known around the world for their superb drumming skills. Creole music is often the term referred to when discussing music in Venezuela since the arrival of Africans. Barlovento, which is referred to as the heart of Venezuelan slave trade and culture, has the most appar apparent African influence on music. The gaeta is the most popular form of music in Venezuela, which got its start in Venezuela. 
in, in Venezuelan music, the African influence is sometimes subtle and sometimes very obvious. Now I will show you a video featuring the group Alegua that I referred to earlier. <laughs> And this is a drum that is usually only played by men traditionally. But the women of Elegua, we decided that we were also going to play it in representation of all women in the world. because she has been dedicated for most of her life not only to teach children in the different schools of the area how to play this instrument called the Kitty Blast, but also how to build it. Thank you, Raven. Now in art and African diaspora in Venezuela. 17th century Venezuelan art incorporated African slaves in historical paintings. These paintings were primarily celebratory of Venezuelan history and even portrayed as an expression of freedom to oppression. Many artists, in fact, um, were commissioned by the government to produce artwork of Africans and indigenous natives of Venezuela. And here is an example of a historical painting commissioned by the government, also done by Pedro Valenilla. Early African artists were usually commissioned to make religious artwork pertaining to the Catholic faith. An example of Catholic and African religion coming together was for the Maria Lianza cult. And here's an example of Maria Lianza influence on paintings done by Pedro Centeno Valenilla. However, as art became modernized, African influence on art faded out. As art moved towards more abstract values, such as those of Carlos Cruz Diaz. Here's an example of abstract modernism of Venezuela, as done by Carlos Cruz Diaz. And now back to you, Ray. Thanks, Delaney. African influences run deep in Venezuelan literature. Now here is a reenactment of an Afro-Venezuelan folktale, The Woman, the Giant, and the Vulture. There was a woman who was very dissatisfied with her life because she found herself perpetually pregnant. She decided to go see God to ask him to relieve her of his constant punishment. She set out, and while she was on the road to Father God's house, a giant saw her coming and called out to her. Hello, good woman. Where, where are you going? Why, she said. I am going to the house of Father God to find out why I have to be pregnant year after year. The giant answered, Oh, now that is something. I think I shall go along. I also have a complaint. I will ask why God made me so big. And without any further discussion, they travel along the road together. Further on, they were greeted by a vulture. He said, 
Hello, you two. Where are you going in such a hurry? The giant answered, We are on the way to see Father God to get some explanations. I want to know why he made me so big, and this woman wants to know why she is always pregnant. The vulture said, Well, now, that is something. I am going with you. I would like to know why God made me so black. So the three of them went on together until they reached heaven. St. Peter greeted them, and when they found out what they wanted, he conducted them to God's house. God listened first to the giant's complaint. He, wrote, he arose from his chair saying, Come with me. He took the giant into an adjoining room. He said, Observe carefully what you see. Lying in the middle of the room was the body of a dead child. The giant said, Sad thing, but what is the meaning of it? The meaning, God said, is that if you had died when you were a small child, you would not be here today complaining about your size. Hearing this, the giant said, No more. Then God spoke to the woman and asked her for her complaint. Is this, it is the constant state of being pregnant, the woman said. Year after year I am pregnant. Why should I be punished this way? God led her outside into the yard, he said. Observe what is going, out, going on out here. All the woman saw were a hen and a rooster. The hen was running this way and that way, pursued by the rooster. The hen jumped on a box and went over the fence. The rooster followed, not quite managing, however, to overtake her. On the other side of the fence, the hen ran one way and, the, and another until she came to a clump of, ro of bushes. And there she hid. The rooster could not find her, and he gave up the chase. I have, I have observed it, said the woman. What does it mean? It means God said if you, that if you follow the good example of this hen, you will not be pregnant all the time. It was in this way that the woman and the giant received God's reply to their complaints. At this point, I'm, I bet you're wondering what happened to the vulture. Well, he lifted up his tail and told everybody to kiss his ass.